The trial of Kyle Rittenhouse is currently ongoing. But outside of the trial, I think it's important that we understand the context of what's happening in this country and what's been happening in this country. That fateful night in Kenosha wasn't the first night of conflict. It had been going on for some time. And Kyle Rittenhouse and several others went out because buildings had been torched. People had been gravely injured. And it wasn't just happening in Kenosha. It was happening all over the country. And it still will. And very likely soon for a variety of reasons. If Kyle Rittenhouse is found not guilty on the murder charges, rest assured people will riot, perhaps across the country. Now, that being said, it is winter, and these rioters don't like going out in inclement weather because, well, we've heard of them as fair weather activists. They only go out when the temperature is right, it's not raining, and this is a fact. Often when it rains, protests don't happen. Because who wants to go stand in the rain? It's typically when it is dark out, and it is 70 or so degrees that people are comfortable to go outside and run them up. So maybe winter will deter any potential riots. But we have a story here from the New York Post. Black Lives Matter leader threatens riots, fire, bloodshed. If New York City, Eric Adams, gets tough on crime. Specifically, there was an anti-crime unit. And since the dissolution of this anti-crime unit, crime has been spiking Here's Fox 5 New York. Violent crime continues to surge in New York City from November 3rd. They say while the NYPD touts a drop in shootings and murders, newly released crime stats show continuing growth in other violent crimes, including felony assaults and robberies. Grand larceny cases also continue to rise. The overall crime rate in New York City was up 11.2% in October compared to a year ago. The number of robberies jumped 15.8% and felonious assaults increased by 13.8% year over year. Grand larceny and auto thefts were also up sharply in October compared to the same period last year. Auto thefts are up almost 15% for the year versus 2020. Gun arrests have jumped 13.9%, burglaries 13.7%. Quote, the men and women of the NYPD have never wavered in their commitment to the collective public safety of all New Yorkers. That's a lie. Let me just stress, when the NYPD came out by the dozens to defend an illegal political painting that de Blasio put in the street. So spare me you, you feigning your nobility. The NYPD is just a group of people who do what they're told. There's a lot of good NYPD. That's true. Many NYPD who refuse to uphold unconstitutional restrictions and mandates. But how many of these government actors, namely police officers, blindly march behind the illegal edicts and actions of someone as corrupt as Bill de Blasio? Too many. They they go on to say, while their devotion to service is commendable, effective crime fighting is predicated upon a collaborative effort from all aspects of our criminal justice landscape, as well as society as a whole. Additionally, our brave officers' work must be reinforced by meaningful consequences that send a consequential message to those who find themselves on the path towards criminality. To put it simply, crime's on the rise. The police are basically saying, don't look at us. Society has kind of fallen apart, and they're not wrong. Back at the New York Post, they report, a Black Lives Matter leader vowed there will be riots, fire, and bloodshed. If mayor-elect Eric Adams follows through with his promise to bring back plainclothes anti-crime cops to battle New York's surge in violent crimes. New York Black Lives Matter co-founder Hank Newsom debated the plan for a return to tougher policing with Adams during a contentious sit down at Brooklyn Borough Hall Wednesday that was live streamed on Instagram. Although Adams found common ground with the activists on plans to fight poverty in the black community, The former NYPD captain said he'll be reinstating a revamped version of the undercover anti-crime unit that was disbanded at the height of widespread police protests last year. Quote, if they think they're going back to the old ways of policing, then we're going to take to the streets again. New York BLM co-founder Hank Newsom said outside Borough Hall after the meeting, there will be riots, there will be fire and there will be bloodshed, he threatened. And let me stress to all of you. This is not one of those media misframings where someone says, and this happens a lot, they'll say something like, hey, if you do this, people are going to riot. That's not a threat. That's a statement of fact. That's basically saying people will react a certain way to a negative action. Let me explain to you what Hank Newsom said. And you know what? I've, I've, I've given this guy respect. I've, uh, I've complimented him and many times this, I think, steps up the line. He says, 
we are going to take to the streets again. We. And when he says we will take to the streets and there will be riots, fire and bloodshed, he is threatening you. This is what we've been dealing with. This is exactly why Kyle Rittenhouse is on trial. He shouldn't have been there. It's a fact. Kyle Rittenhouse should not have been there for a variety of reasons. Now, I know there's an argument over the gun possession, and it seems that he does fall under an exception, but we don't know exactly what the legislature meant by their exception, other than the law seems to exempt him. Regardless, he shouldn't have been there. He shouldn't have had the rifle. He shouldn't have been on the ground. And I understand why he was, because the police weren't doing anything because the feds weren't doing anything, because the riots had been ongoing and people got fed up and said enough. And so they showed up. Local militia, basically a group of individuals who banded together and brought first aid, uh, first aid kits and, and weapons to try and maintain some semblance of order. A man in his 70s, I believe, I believe that's his age, but a man was cracked over the back of the skull with a rock by a rioter and left bleeding on the ground. And where were the police? The police could have came in and dispersed the crowd. The police could have made arrests. And instead, they just stayed back like they often do. So what ends up happening is that some locals get together and say, we're going to try and keep this place safe. Kyle Rittenhouse was his life was threatened and he was chased by two men, not just Rosenbaum, but another man, Zeminski, who fired a gun into the air while Rittenhouse was being chased. The trial's ongoing. But what do you think is going to happen when you see these videos? Now, I tweeted out a video. I don't have it pulled up. It shows a group of individuals robbing a store, uh, filling up shopping carts and just throwing all of the gro- all these groceries and like laundry detergent into their trucks. And people are saying, don't do anything. You'll get fired. Don't do anything. A society like this can't function. The culture is broken. And what we see in San Francisco with people going into stores and just dumping all of the goods into bags and leaving shows you our culture has already collapsed. Or to be fair, we're looking at the foundations. They have been eroded to such a degree that the building, our institutions are struggling to remain standing. I will take you back in time. We didn't see a lot of stuff like this back in time, but we did see political, you know, ideological violence. We did see mass protests. And this is when culture uh, was was, you know, at odds, culture wars, various various moments throughout uh, history. But for the most part, we all agreed on certain rules. We all agreed on, you know, our, our, our concern for society as a whole. There are people who commit crimes because they don't respect society. They don't feel that they're a part of it. They feel they're outside of it. But for a long time, a lot of people felt like they were a part of society. Like, why won't I rob that person? Because I have scruples, because people know who I am, because it could be bad. We don't have that anymore. I mean, everything is just breaking down. I'll stress this point. Rodney King, video emerges of him being beaten by police, and they riot in LA. They riot to an extreme degree. Today, we get video after video of rioters destroying and smashing things. No one will do anything. Trump could have invoked the Insurrection Act. He didn't. He could have sent in the military to try and secure these cities. He didn't do it. They did it during the L.A. riots. Not now. Because there's no political willpower, not even among Trump, that when the riots break out, no one does anything. And so you end up with vigilantes. You end up with local militias. Going on, they say, quote, to ignore that history. And say you're bringing back means, uh, bringing it back means that he's tone deaf. Newsom told the Post over a phone, phone uh, over the phone, about the task force whose officers were involved in the deaths of uh, deaths of Amadou Diallo, Sean Bell, and Eric Garner. Adams throughout his campaign promised to bring to bring back a reinvented version of the anti crime unit that was tasked with firearms bust as well as a crackdown on violent crime and hard drugs. The controversial unit was dissolved in June 2020 by police commissioner Dermot Shea following a disproportionate number of high profile incidents that involved the plainclothes cops. Former officer Danielle Pantaleo was assigned to the anti-crime unit when he placed Eric Garner into a chokehold on Staten Island with the man's last words, I can't breathe, becoming a rallying cry for the BLM movement. The BLM leader said that he was troubled. Adams didn't offer a comment on police reform. He wouldn't offer us anything concrete during their sit down. I'll explain to you all, my friends, the scaling problem. You have 10 plus million people 
coming in and out of New York every single day. You had 2.5 on Manhattan Island alone. I believe it's down a little bit because people were moving out. Of those millions of people in New York City proper, how many high profile stories have we seen? The NYPD, they came out when, when they were being attacked by it politically and said that out of, what was it, 375 million police interactions, there are a small handful of very negative incidents. Eric Garner, for instance, there was only a handful in New York. When you have the scaling problem, for those that aren't familiar, and I mention it a lot because I think it's an important concept across the board, especially, you know, talking about vaccines or otherwise. If 100 people are given a smartphone and 1% of those phones break, that's one phone. One person comes out and says, my phone broke. And people say, well, doesn't seem like a whole lot of phones breaking. No one really cares. It's malfunction, right? 100 million phones are given out. 1% break. The same proportion. But now there are a million people all over the internet screaming and saying, what is wrong with these phones? And it seems to people that all of the phones are bad. That's what's happening with police. And that's why we face very serious consequences moving forward. There will always be negative police interactions. There will always be accidents. But when you have a social media apparatus that can take a disproportionate amount of accidents, compile them all together and make it seem like police are going around hunting down black people, then you will end up with people threatening violence and you will get that violence. And then when the police can't handle the incessant insanity, vigilantes will emerge. The BLM leader said, we will be at his front door. We will be at Gracie Mansion. We will be in the streets if he allows these police to abuse us. I am not threatening anyone. I am just saying that it's a natural response to aggressive oppression. People will react, except he mentioned we will do this. In a statement of the Post, Adam said that there is no reason we cannot have both safe streets and racial justice in our city. What does that even mean? You see, they have no answers. None of it makes sense. Racial justice. Stop voting for Democrats, maybe. Stop voting in the same people over and over again. But they don't. They keep voting for the same people. Then they complain about the people they voted for. And then they vote for them again. Then they try to get federal legislation passed. And they push their cult ideology garbage on people who don't want to have anything to do with their psychotic delusions. There's racism in this country. But guess what? Through statute, we have eliminated the legal racial injustice because it's real, because it existed. Now we have nebulous cultural concepts being pushed by these people. Oh, you know, they're, they, the, the, that police officer is racist. Why? Because the person he arrested was black or brown. Could it have been that that person simply broke the law? You know, I think culture plays a way bigger role than race. But the issue I have is that when they say racial justice, they have no explanation for what that means in any logic, in any reality. They simply say things that aren't true. They claim that police are hunting down black people. When we have the stats from 2019, and it was like 12 out of hundreds of millions of interactions with police, 12 unarmed black men were shot and killed, and they should not have been. And each and, one of, each and every one of those instances is a tragedy, and there must be justice for that, for those individuals. But this is the scaling problem. The more people you have, the more police you have, the more police interactions you have, the more you will see these moments. It doesn't mean the institutions are corrupt, though mostly they are, I would say. But it doesn't mean they're all racist. It doesn't mean the system does not work. It means there is a margin of failure. And if you want to get to the point where there's zero margin of failure, I commend that, that goal. But I'm not convinced it's possible because bad humans exist. Let me bring you to your future, my friends. Let me show you uh, your future. Do I have this? Here we go. Here it is. From TimCast.com. LAPD tells residents to cooperate and comply with robbers amid rise in burglaries. This is the future you will get under Black Lives Matter under wokeism. We watch the videos of them loot and burn, walking in a store, stealing whatever they want, and no one can do anything to stop them. Because the police won't. They don't want to riot. Because culture and society is breaking down. When you have large enough groups of people that will flash mob, that will riot, because someone committed a crime, 
well, the police won't be able to enforce those laws anymore. And so what do they tell you to do? Comply. Just give in. It's the craziest thing. I remember growing up in Chicago and I would see these signs. They would, you know, I don't know if they they were signs, but the message was always from police. If someone is robbing you or mugging you, just give them whatever they want. And that always pissed me off because I thought to myself, if all of the signs said, if all of the narratives pushed out said, if you try, if someone is going to mug you, shoot them in self-defense. If someone is putting you in reasonable fear of of losing your life, shoot them in self-defense. If every message was the moment someone tries to mug you, attack them, defend yourself, then what do you think would happen with crime right now in Chicago? And this is this is this is horrifying in other parts of the country. This is what happens. Criminals are emboldened. They know that no one will stop them. They know that people are told to drop to their knees. So they walk up to people and they say, do as you're told or else. And guess what most people do? They do as they're told. I was never that kind of person. Uh, never. I mean, watch the video of me in Boston with Antifa when the guy gets in my face and it's swinging at me and I just don't move. I just tighten my abs, clenched my jaw and st- stood my ground. I'm not going to walk away. I don't care who you think you are. These people only get away with it because other people are scared. I'm not. I don't know what these people think they can do to me. In Chicago, I once got mugged. And I told the guy to shove off. He was like, I know you're hiding money in your shoe. And I started laughing. And I just kept walking. I'm like, bro, take my, what are you going to do? You know what I mean? My attitude to them always was, I don't care if you have a gun. I don't care if you have a knife. If you come up to me and demand something from me, you will get a fight. A very serious one. And you better be ready to kill me. You know the funny thing about growing up in Chicago that way? Rarely was I ever subjected to any kind of mugging or crime in a city with extremely high crime, because whenever people would get near me, I'd I'd react particularly negatively. And the one time someone tried to mug me, I just told him to shove off. Now, to be fair, in that instance, an anti-crime unit emerged from the shadows. I, I mean this literally. A guy was trying to mug me telling me to do the right thing because he didn't want to have to hurt me. And he was carrying a knife. And I just laughed and ignored him and kept walking, literally just kept walking. And then all of a sudden, a plainclothes officer grabbed him and slammed him up against a wrought iron fence and screamed, not in my town. Legit happened. No joke. Serious story. I always felt like people who get victimized are people who are victims, people who appeared scared and unwilling to stand up for themselves. And I I think about it from any uh, predatorial perspective. A criminal is going to seek out the path of least resistance. What we get now, LAPD telling you just give in, just cooperate, just drop to your knees. Not me. Not me. Now, look, I don't want to hurt anybody. If I have the ability to retreat in a conflict, I will to avoid, you know, anyone getting harmed. If you, you'll understand this in any martial art and any anyone who teaches about fighting, the fight you avoid is the fight you've won. So if someone breaks into my house and I do have the ability to get out safely without killing or harming somebody, I will do my best, even though in many states, particularly where I live, I have castle doctrine. That being said, for the most part, the safest place I could be is in my own home, where I know where everything is, where I have the ability to defend myself. And what that means is if someone is trying to commit a burglary in my home and they are armed, I will defend myself and others and not allow them just to come in. Going out into the cold and the wilderness is not necessarily the safest position for me. And that being said as well, for all I know, this person has accomplices who are outside waiting to try and catch anybody who flees, in which case the best thing you can do is defend your home, call the police. In L.A., they say just cooperate. Why? Well, because people aren't armed. Out in West Virginia, we are armed to the teeth. If you would like to commit a serious crime threatening my life or anyone else's in a state where we are all constitutionally carrying, please don't. Please do not. Because I don't want to have to hurt anybody or ever be in a situation like that. And I will always do my best to avoid causing harm. But if you threaten my life and I am put in a position where I have a choice of dying or living, 
I'll choose living. If everybody behaved that way, if everybody had that attitude, crime would be gone. People in Chicago would be like, I'm not committing a crime. That person's going to crack me over the face with, you know, who knows what. Instead, in these big cities, they say, bend the knee. In the bigger picture, with Black Lives Matter, with all the crime and everything we've seen, the police aren't prosecuting criminals like Gage Grosskreutz, a man who showed up to a riot with a gun he was not legally allowed to possess. To possess. Again, I'm not a fan of the law, but he wasn't charged for what was a clear statutory legal violation. Criminal act. These people are emboldened. They know they have the media on their sides, politicians on their side, and they know that the police are told to stand down. You will get more crime, violence and rioting. And this, my friends, is why you end up with a Kyle Rittenhouse situation, a terrible situation that shouldn't have happened. I don't think he, Kyle Rittenhouse should have been out there. I think that is important to state. But I understand why he was. Because the police have stopped doing what they're supposed to do. Instead, they they defend Black Lives Matter murals that the, the mayor illegally paints in the street. A lot of good cops quit and the bad cops remain and they don't uphold the law. Instead, it's Kyle Rittenhouse on the stand. He was attacked by three criminals, violently assaulted. Those people should be on the stand. This is your future, my friends. Because millennials will take over, and this is what they will bring. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcast. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then. Could you please state your name, spelling your last name for the record? Officer Brittany Bray, last name is spelled B-R-A-Y. 